Hello everyone, I'm Satish, PhD candidate at University of California, Santa Barbara. In today's presentation, we'll be discussing about our work, Methane Mapper. In this work, we are doing methane gas detection from airborne hyperspectral imagery shown with sample data cube. The Methane Mapper processes that hyperspectral data cube and generates a segmentation mask as shown in red in the right-hand side image. Red represents the methane presence on the ground. The hyperspectral data cube is collected by a sensor named Everest NG from an airplane. Our major contribution in this work are we introduce a novel single stage end to end approach for methane plume detection using a hyperspectral transformer. Our second main contribution is largest public hyperspectral dataset that we call as methane hotspot dataset. Our dataset constitute flight lines from six different states over a time period of eight years. In this talk, we'll be starting with the motivation for methane detection, why it is important, and how does it impact our environment. We'll be also talking in detail about our methane hotspot dataset, which is followed by a detailed discussion on the architecture of methane mapper and conclusion. The recent International Climate Summit put a spotlight on methane emissions, responsible for almost 30% of the global warming. This gas goes undetected because of its invisible nature, and even the government is struggling to put a curb on these emissions. Though the methane gas is short-lived, it lasts only for a decade or so, but the heat holding capacity of methane is almost 80 times to that of carbon dioxide. So to put it into perspective, the amount of damage carbon dioxide will do to the environment in 100 years, methane can do that in 1.2 years only. So where does this come from? One third of the gas emissions come from dairy farms and livestock. One third of the gas emissions comes from oil and natural gas industry and 16% comes from landfill sites. So this image was published in New York Times two years ago. Everything seems super normal in the visible domain. At the moment you look slightly beyond the visible spectrum, you see a large amount of emissions from that chimney. So to identify such emission sources, NASA JPL flew an airplane with hyperspectral sensor and capture images as shown with sample uh, data cube. And by hyperspectral image, I mean is, instead of like RGB images with three channels, in hyperspectral, we have 432 channels, ranging from 400 nanometer to 2500 nanometer, in short infrared. And this encouraged a lot of development of detection methods for methane, but they all came with a lot of limitations. All of them are highly prone to false positives due to confuses on the ground which mimics methane presence. And those confuses are hydrocarbon paints, concrete structures, roads, etc. Another major limitation is these methods are not scalable. You always need a domain expert to do the corrections. Moving towards the deep learning approaches, the most uh, recent one is Methanet, which is a quantification method, not a detection method. So it's highly dependent on the clean output from conventional detection method. And another big limitation is there is no available counter data. So to address these limitations one by one, so we curated the largest hyperspectral data set called as methane hotspot data, which constitute of binary segmentation mass of the early uh, binary segmentation mass as ground truth for methane, along with a concentration mask also, which provides amount of methane available on each particular pixel in the special domain. We map all the concentration masks to the Everest NG flight lines. We have provided more details in our supplementary materials, how we did that. If you're interested, you can uh, look into that. These are the statistics of our data. I want to emphasize on two particular points. Our data set is uh, constituted eight years of time period and six different regions. It covers the dry and arid region of Texas and Arizona, Arizona semi-arid region, regions of California, and then dense and wet vegetation region of Virginia. This is a very common uh, problem in remote sensing community. If you train a neural network with a, a specific region in California, it won't work in Arizona. So in this aspect, our methane mapper is drawn on a, a trained on a very diverse set of data set and it's very robust to the background context. It's a spectral absorption of your hyperspectral transformer architecture. This is our end-to-end -end pipeline. The data flow is from left to right and you can see we start with a input hyperspectral data cube, which is processed by our spectral feature generator. 
it generates methane candidate map. Those methane candidate maps are passed to our query refiner module, which cross send the methane candidate maps with the random queries to generate refined queries. These refined queries are passed to, on to our decoder. These queries ref basically reduces the search space of our transformer decoder to locate methane plumes and help remove the false positives. So moving into a little details about our uh, spectral feature generator. Our spectral feature generator, uh, sorry, our spectral linear filter, excuse me, basically filters out the background noise based on the spectral absorption properties of the methane gas. The absorption of solar reflected radiation by methane is modeled as additive perturbation as shown, where Ri is the IF pixel and the hyperspectral image representing the ground terrain, and T is the prior information that we have about the methane absorption pattern. This is how uh, T looks like. Since our signature of interest that we're looking is very weak, we do a dot product with a special vector alpha that is called a smash filter. So what this does this alpha vector does is it whitens the background noise and enhances our weak signal. And how does it do that? It computes the covariance of the background when there is no methane present. And then this is how the formulation of output of match filter looks like. It gives a per pixel estimate of methane. We observed that the covariance computed in the previous step have an underlying assumption that the ground terrain does not change at all. But that is not the case. When you're flying an airplane for almost 300, km, 300 kilometers of flight line, they are different. There are rocky mountains, there are sandy areas, there are wet and vegetation area, and there's water bodies too. Each of them have different type of solar uh, radiation, uh, so solar radiation reflectance, and then the amount of methane presence on top of uh, each of them is totally dependent on how much radiation are getting reflected. So to address this, we did a simple land cover classification and then computed the covariance of each class. And you can see how effective our this very our simple tweak is. You can compute like a traditional match filter where each white pixel shows uh, methane and black pixel shows no methane. And you can see like we are able to remove almost 90% of the false positives just in our initial step only. And compared to our, we correlate very highly with the dominant mask. To show you some quantitative performance measure, we did an extensive evaluation on large baseline, many baseline methods. And you can see methane mapper outperforms all of them by a big margin. And just to, to show you the robustness of our method, we have different kind of terrains. We have emissions from a pipeline, emissions from agriculture site, emissions from oil refinery, and emissions from a storage, all with uh, like a storage tank, all with varying kind of uh, background terrain. And you can see Methane method does a very good job with the predictions as shown in the top. So in conclusion, we provide an end-to-end -end approach with high quality methane plume detection method and large, very really largest hyperspectral data for the community. Thank you so much for listening. You can find our source code and data set on the following link.